Alright, tag me in guys, it's Spaz, your YWC Reality Check, and it's about time I do another Name Your Star, because since, since I started doing the uh, Name Your Star thing, I've only ever really responded to two, because I've had other things to talk about, rant about, I've been doing collaborations, reviews, and everything but the Name Your Star, which is what I started at the beginning of the year. So, thinking I might change this up a little bit, A, because when the... Uh, when the format of YouTube changes over and uh, we lose the whole moderator box thing, I'm going to have to find another way to do Q&A and Name Your Star, which is a pain in the ass. I've seen the new layout. It's horrible. They change it and they make it worse. You know, YouTube is going the same way as Facebook, where every time they try to change something, they just make it worse. So, I think Q&A and Name Your Star are going to be relegated to video comments or... Uh, leaving me a message, say, on my Twitter, on uh, on Facebook, etc. Oh, incidentally, the uh, the group dedicated to this channel on YouTube, or sorry, on Facebook, does not have very much action in it at all. It's in the uh, description of every video. Please go look, please go check it out. Uh, if you want to follow, you know, what I'm thinking while I'm watching shows and whatnot, it's usually there. It's also on my Twitter because I gave in and got one of those two but um, the other thing that's happening is the Q&A part isn't really getting much attention at all it's more so people giving me suggestions for Name Your Star which is awesome and I said I wasn't going to do a Q&A until I got 10 questions but what I'm thinking is because the majority of you who leave me something for Name Your Star leave a question in the same comment as your name your star suggestion so if you leave me a name your star suggestion with a question attached I'm gonna answer that question when I do your name your star uh, if you leave me just a question I might wait until there's a few if you want to leave me more than one question by all means do it um, I'm not going to do more than one uh, star in name your star I'm gonna keep those specific and try to keep them short but uh, that's how I'm going to do it for the foreseeable future. If you guys have suggestions, any other way I could do it, any other ways you want to send me the Q&A stuff, the Name Your Star stuff, you can send it to me on Facebook, you can send it to me on Twitter, you can, if you want, you can inbox me, you can email me, you can do whatever you want. But uh, the interactive stuff here on YouTube is really, really what I want to... Uh, like I said at the beginning of the year, I want to get the conversation going. I don't just want to sit here, run my mouth until I'm out of breath, and have no uh, no conversation with you guys. Now, the one cool thing about YouTube and the people that have responded to me and the people that always do respond to me, I am blown away by the fact that most of the people that watch my channel seemingly are on another continent. Most of the people, at least the more vocal ones, are from the UK area. And me sitting here in Canada, yes, the internet is worldwide, but the idea that people are watching me around the world, it's its obvious on one hand, but it's very, very humbling at the same time, in the other hand. And I really want to stop and thank you guys for that, because it's an amazing feeling knowing that somebody on the other side of the world wants to know what the hell I have to say. <laughs> in that vein... West 8 Ham from Hull, England writes, Name your star, Bully Ray, and the question is, if you could choose five TNA stars and five WWE stars to switch shows, who would they be and why? I'm going to go with Bully Ray first of all. I've been a fan of the Dudleys in general since they debuted in WWE. They were that team that sort of didn't really break the mold. They weren't really... I mean, they were big, but they weren't like the bodybuilder, like Batista, Triple H types, and they weren't pretty boys by any stretch of the imagination. They were the last in a dying breed of, of the mostly the ones that came from, from ECW, really, let's be honest. The guys like Rhino, the guys like uh, Benoit, um, guys of that vein, Sandman, Tommy Dreamer, whatever, who really were the dirty, gritty fighters, brawlers, uh, back alley, you know, fist fight type guys. And that was the appeal of, of the Dudley Boys for a long time. TNA sort of uh, succeeded where WWE failed. WWE tried to split them up a number of times. Uh, the Dudley Boys, I mean, they tried to have Bubba tag up with Spike instead of Devon. They had Devon go off and do his Reverend Devon thing where his sidekick was uh, Deacon Batista. 
And uh, the fact that Batista, who then went on to become as big as he did, was at one time uh, Devon Dudley's sidekick is absolutely laughable in this day and age. But Bully Ray, he doesn't look like a wrestler, does he? He doesn't look like anybody that you would think would win a match. And you get um, a match with Bully Ray, and the only reason Bully Ray works is because he's Bully Ray. He looks like somebody you would run into in a back alley in New York. Um, the whole idea that he broke away from the Dudleys successfully this time, broke away and went and did something else. Yeah, he feuded with um, with Devon a little bit when they first broke up. It happens. That's how they break up tag teams. One of them has a problem with the other one. But um, he's really, really gone and he's really latched himself onto success, being under the tutelage of guys like Flair and Rude and uh, and Hogan with, with the Immortal with the immortal thing there. Um, he's inserted himself quite clearly in the main event scene, whereas years ago you wouldn't have nearly pictured him there. And, you, you know, you turn around one day and you've got this guy who's got a big-ass chain around his neck like Junkyard Dog, and he's got shorts that are a little too short for a guy his size. And you take all the individual things alone, and if you didn't know who he was and you heard all those aspects, you would think it was a fucking joke or he was a jobber or something. But it's bully freaking Ray. And that's all you really need. He is in a fatal four-way at Against All Odds, which is, I believe, this Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, against Robert Roode, James Storm, who are two of the biggest pushed names in TNA right now, Jeff Hardy, who is over as a motherfucker. I don't care who you are or if you like him or not, he's over as a motherfucker no matter where he goes. Bully Ray's there, and he doesn't seem out of place. Now, partly... That's because of the long, long, long standing feud between the Dudleys and the Hardys, which goes back to WWE. Toss in Edge and Christian, you've got the, you know, the culmination of TLC when that was first created. And that story will always follow. Um, I really wish we had seen, at one point or another, a Hardys versus Dudleys feud in TNA. We never really saw that come to fruition with the Hardys and their issues and the Dudleys breaking up, etc. But, um, yeah... Somebody that I never thought would be in a main event title scene. Yes, it's in a secondary company, but he finally broke away from Devon. And I'm sorry, he's the Shawn Michaels of the Dudley Boys, and Devon was always the Genetti. Devon's a hard worker, don't get me wrong. But if you broke the team up and you knew one was going to go to the main event scene, you knew, you knew it was going to be Bully Ray. You, you, like, there wasn't any... He was the more outspoken, he was the more charismatic, which is beyond anything because if like I say it, I'm not a, trying to make this too much of a visual thing but if you look at him he doesn't look like a main eventer but if you know him you know he's a main eventer and it's very intriguing that way um, if he does come out of against all odds with the championship I doubt it's gonna happen because they're pushing Rude and Storm and Jeff Hardy's just made his comeback which is amazing for me big Hardy mark right here but if Bully Ray walked out of against all odds with the t with the TNA World Heavyweight Championship it wouldn't bug me it really really wouldn't a lot of other people would be up in arms a lot of other people would would say that he's the jobber going into this but he's the one that brings the tough guy credibility to the match um, nobody wants him to win but at the same time you look at him and how tough he is and how hardcore he is um, him winning is out of the question but him losing is impressive. It's, it's a paradox, isn't it? I love the paradox of Bully Ray, the guy who, by all rights and all stretches of the imagination, should not be a main eventer, if you look at the facts individually, but if you put them together, he can't not be a main eventer. I really don't know how else to put it. Granted, yes, him and Devon, every company they were in, NWA, AWA, ECW, TNA, uh, WCW, WWE, WWF, World Heavyweight Ch Champions, WWE, or sorry, World Tag Team Champions, WWE Tag Team Champions. They've got, what was it at last count, 24 different tag team title runs under their belt? That's unheard of. You know, you talk about the Ric Flair, you know, 16-time World Heavyweight Champion. Well, the equivalent in tag team wrestling, which is what they mastered, they've almost doubled Ric Flair. Take a minute and think about that. And now, to have that whole tag team career, and to be starting fresh with a singles career where I can say comfortably at this point he belongs in the World Heavyweight Championship pitcher, that's fucking phenomenal. And I don't mean AJ Styles. Yeah.
I hope he does get a world title before he goes. I hope he comes to, back to WWE at some point and has a major t major title run there, but I don't think he will, which is really, really sad, because sooner or later, the Dudleys belong in the Hall of Fame. But that's another video for another time. That is my two cents on Bully Ray, Bubba Ray, Brother Ray, Bubba Ray Dudley, whatever you want to call him. Great-ass talent, and I hope he doesn't go anywhere anytime soon. Now, the question, if I could pick five from TNA and five from WWE to switch over, this is something we do all the time, isn't it? This is something I used to do back when I was a WCW fan, and who should come over, and who should stay, and who should go back, etc. But I've got... I put, I put a little list together. I did this about ten minutes ago, so it's right, like, what's off the top of my head right now. Who would I send to TNA? I would send Beth Phoenix to TNA, because Beth Phoenix, other than Karma, is a big fish in a small pond. She's dominating the Barbie dolls. They're not booking Tamina and Natalia strong enough just yet, but she looks like she's floating on a river of Barbie dolls, and she could do so, so, so much more. Now, would I like to see her go up against a Mickey James? Would I like to go up see her against, say, a Gail Kim, or even an ODB? ODB and Beth Phoenix in a, in a street fight. Can you imagine that? Throw China into the mix, because China last time China wrestled, it was for TNA. So, see Beth Phoenix versus China. That would be fucking phenomenal as well. There's so many more options that would open up for Beth Phoenix, and somebody with the amount of talent and the amount of presence, physical presence, that she has in a company that respects women's wrestling so much more than WWE does like TNA. Um, next two, two guys that are completely underutilized, almost off the map in WWE. In uh, JTG, who basically lives on NXT now and lives on Superstars now, which is sad. And R-Truth, who's always hovering around the main event scene but never really having it swing his way. I would send them to TNA as a tag team. I've wanted to do this for years. Anytime you know, I've I've spoken about, you know, I don't like thrown together tag teams, but when the topic of thrown together tag teams comes together, it's so glaring to me anyway. It's such an obvious pairing. JTG and R Truth. I think they would be entertaining. I think they would be funny. I think the comical value of it alone would sell seats. I think you would have them, you know, being like sort of one iteration, one version of the gangster stereotype that where they'd be completely silly and maybe pulling off like, you know, old school crime time-esque type shenanigans against, you know, the more negative, hateful gang style, um, gang style gangster type of image of somebody like a Mexican America or an LAX. And, you know, to have two gimmicks like that that are so similar and yet so opposite going head to head, especially in a place like TNA where the tag team wrestling is a little better. I think it would work phenomenally, and I think it would do great things for two guys in WWE that don't get one second of the time that they deserve. Morrison. Morrison got fucked by WWE. Right up the ass with a barbed wire baseball bat. Yeah, he pissed off Trish Stratus. Yes, I'm a fan of Trish Stratus. Yo, pissing off a former champion or former, yeah, former champion, former star, whatever, should get you a reprimand, it should get you all kinds of things, but it should not get you out the front door at the end of a, on the end of a steel-toed boot. Send Morris into TNA. Oh my god, is there anything more custom-made for John Morrison than the X Division in TNA? I don't friggin' think so. Last but not least, another guy that is tremendously underutilized in WWE and has been for years and was treated properly and respectfully with the world championship respect that he deserves is Christian. Put Christian back in TNA the way he was first time around when he was feuding with guys like Kurt Angle and having decent convincing main event matches with guys of that with of that caliber and that stigma and not having the stigma of being, you know, Edge's sidekick, which is the biggest thing that holds Christian back in WWE now. Um Put Christian back where he was respected, where he was applauded, where he was appreciated. Put Christian back in TNA. Absolutely. freaking lutely Now to WWE. First one's obvious. First one is Jeff Hardy. And I'm not going to state, and I'm not going to ramble on, and I'm not going to come up with a whole bunch of little reasons to put Jeff Hardy back in WWE. In my opinion, in my humble heart and soul, Jeff Hardy belongs in the WWE. He deserves to be there, and he deserves to hold major gold. I know, this box down here is going to light up like the 4th of July as soon as I say that, but I really don't give a shit. Most of the people that are going to get on me for saying that 
Jeff Hardy deserves main event world title gold in WWE. The ones that are going to get on me for that, you're probably all Cena marks. So, um, who else would I put in? Robert Roode. Robert Roode would be an excellent addition to the main event scene in WWE. I could, I would love to see Robert Roode versus Triple H. I think, I think that has tremendous possibilities. Triple H doesn't wrestle as much anymore, but it is what it is. It's just, it's a match I would like to see. Um, before Triple H retires, I would love to see it. I don't care if if it's, it's, it's in a house show. I really, really don't care. Um, I could see him digging himself more generically into the title picture against guys like Daniel Bryan, against guys like CM Punk. Robert Roode versus CM Punk, that would be another good one. Um, taking on Jericho. Taking on... Can you imagine Robert Roode versus Randy Orton, even? I think there's not a single person in the main event scene in WWE Robert Roode with his skill set could not mesh up quite well with. The next two, Alex Selly and Chris, Chris Sabin, collectively known as the Motor City Machine Guns. Quite simply, WWE needs tag teams, you know. Like uh, Alex Shelley says, you know, Detroit needs heroes. WWE needs tag teams. Put them in either as the ones that take the titles off Epico and Primo or as the, as the legitimate tag team that legitimizes Epico and Primo. Either way. Um, put them in there, even in a number one contendership type storyline situation with with a team like the Usos. Help them bring up, or sorry, let them help bring up a team like Rex and Hawkins, who are again one of the one of the teams that's relegated to NXT and superstars. Bring them forward, bring them into the light, so to speak, of SmackDown or Raw. I think. Um, Alex Shelley, Chris Saban, the Motor City Machine Guns, could take the name that they made for themselves in TNA and actually use it in a productive way in WWE. The last thing I'm going to say, yes, I want to bring Robert Roode in. He would be a great addition to the main event title pitcher in WWE. Who would I put in the mid in the mid range title pitcher? Who would I love to see go up against Cody Rhodes for the Intercontinental Championship? And do I think it would be WrestleMania worthy? Absolutely. It would be AJ freaking Styles. AJ Styles in the mid-card scene in WWE would be amazing. Put him up against, uh, if Dolph Ziggler still had the U.S. Championship, I would have loved for AJ Styles to be the guy that took the U.S. Championship off of, uh, off of Dolph Ziggler, because Dolph Ziggler was going to go to the main event scene. We knew it. Who could take a mid-card title like that and run with it and make it, you know, almost on par with the world title? Somebody like an AJ Styles. Somebody with the passion and the diversity and the, you know, reckless in-ring style of an AJ Styles. I think it would be phenomenal. Yes, I took the cliche. It was right there. Anyways, West 8 Ham, thank you for your questions. Thank you for your suggestions. I've been Spaz. Subscribe up there. Talk down there. Start a conversation. Let me know what you all think. Start a conversation, and I will talk to all you guys later. Bye. Get up, come on, get down.